Hi everybody, welcome back to the M-Man Breaks. This is not going to be a card opening video. This is going to be a card carrying video. So the best possible way to store your cards or if you plan on selling them and or making a trade with someone on the other side of the country, this is going to be a video based on the best possible way and method to send your cards through the mail. So in my last video, I opened a Christian Pache rookie card, Next Wave from Topps Gallery. It's a beautiful card. I really like the player. However, he's not part of my personal collection. So if I wanted to ship him, I would... There was two different options. It's PWE, or Plain White Envelope, or BMWT, Bubble Mailer with Tracking. Um, bubble Mailers are typically a lot more expensive, especially with tracking associated with it. So if you just wanted to use Snail Mail and toss them in an, a regular envelope, before you just toss this card in an envelope, there's a few things you should do first. First thing... Go to your local hobby store and grab something what is called penny sleeves. Penny sleeves are just little thin pieces of plastic that when you put the card inside, it protects it from surface scratches. And it can also protect it if it accidentally drops and won't create a, a ding or a dent. Um, but that might not be enough if you're just storing them for your own sake. So you need to get something that's called a top loader. Think of it as like a plastic penny sleeve same idea protects it on the side and you put it in the top you put it in and it's now going to protect the corners from damage but it's not all the way in remember it's just a piece of plastic so all you need to do to get the card to the bottom and it's in this card is now almost completely protected the last piece of protection i would recommend for anybody is painter's tape don't use duct tape don't use regular tape that you use to wrap your holiday gifts Go to your dollar store, get a roll of painter's tape. And the reason why I say painter's tape is if for some reason you need to remove the card, you need to take a picture of it, someone wants to buy it from you, or you want to make a trade with somebody. When you remove the tape from the card, the special adhesive that they have doesn't leave any sticky substance behind on the plastic. That's critical, especially if you're going to have other cards stacked up against each other, kind of like in a shoebox form. So if you wanted to, if I wanted to mail this card, I have two different options. There's a plain white envelope and there's bubble mailer with tracking. Bubble mailer with tracking is a little more expensive because it's a larger envelope. But if you just wanted to use a regular plain white envelope, for example, uh, this bad boy, and then you load it in here, a regular greeting card, when you're at the dollar store buying your painter's tape, grab a box of the greeting cards. Usually they come with envelopes. And if you're going to use snail mail, you slap a stamp and off it goes. But before you even do that... What you want to do is not use, I'm not going to use that, not use your um, top loader if you're going to ship with a, a regular plain white envelope. If you're using one of these, do not use a top loader. You're going to take your card. I'm going to go for the fancy one. You're going to take your card in the penny sleeve, put it in here, and you're done, right? No. What you're going to want to do is a little bit of what everyone knows the three R's are. Reduce, reuse, recycle. So you get another piece of cardboard. You cut out the right size of cardboard that you need to kind of surround the card. So you'd cut a piece of cardboard about that size, and you're going to get two pieces and almost like make a sandwich with them. Now, cardboard can be everywhere. It can be nowhere. It's one of those things where it's never around when you need it. But let me tell you, if you're like me and you open blasters, you open hangers, there's actually very, very handy. Do not get rid of the boxes after you open the cards. Hold on to them if you have any intent to uh, resell or, or trade your cards uh, with someone on the other side of the country. Because what, once you do that, you just cut out the size of the card, right? And as you can see, I've done this before with someone else. You just cut out the size or a little bit larger than the size of the card. And this one side was one piece. And then you take another piece of the same side, put it in there, then you put that in, the green card. From that, uh, what this fine person did is they then sealed the opening with their blue painter's tape. And that way, the card was in there with nowhere to go. And then you toss that in the plain white envelope and off it goes. That's the best possible way if you're going to send in a regular, plain old, plain white envelope. PWE is the acronym that mostly use within the hobby. If you're going to ship something, if the card is worth a heck of a lot more money, you're going to want to use the penny sleeve, top loader, 
and then you're going to want to put it in a bubble mailer. The reason why you use the bubble mailer is because, as you can tell, this one is full of the trash that I had. Uh, the inside is used with bubble wrap. Pop, pop, pop. And that protects the contents of the card. I would highly recommend keeping it like this with the... Oh, where did my thing go now? With the painter's tape on top, just in case if... For some reason, the bubble mailer gets tossed around too much. The card doesn't accidentally slide out because Murphy's Law, if that happens, oh, see, good thing it's protected, right? It's not going anywhere. So that is the, I find, the most effective way to ship a card and to take care of it. If you just want it to hold on to your card and keep it this way and keep it looking good, especially if it's going to have a kind of a rainbow effect like this one does, you're going to want to keep it in a top loader and you want to keep it scratch-free and... You don't want it to lose any kind of valuation. To me, this card is... <laughs> Carlos Correa, not a fan. This card is available for anyone. 71 to 75. But even though I don't like... he's Even though he's not one of my favorite players, like one of the, one of the fellas you see in the background, it's still a great card, and I want to make sure it's properly taken care of. So, uh, to summarize this video, it was that, that was more for care of your cards as opposed to just opening them. Go and grab... A bag of penny sleeves um, you're going to want to get a box of greeting cards which is available at the dollar at your dollar store this and painter's tape a roll like this this is going to last me and my kids the next <laughs> their generation if they get into card collecting so that's kind of the basic things that you're going to want to get plus top loaders i have a few here i'm not going to try to I'm not going to show the brand name but i have quite a few top loaders just plain nothing fancy but they're going to protect the card even if you're not a fan of the card somebody is and like always if there's a card that you've seen that you really like um and it's not part of my personal collect collection as in these um let me know i am going to be looking into um giving cards to people who are subscribed who are active in the videos and for example there uh, the there's one user that has made a few suggestions on what I should open. Uh, their username is Pepper Retriever. So I'm talking to you now, Pepper Retriever. If there is a card that you really enjoy, if one of these two or from any of my other videos, if I still have it, if it's still available, I want you to let me know, message me, and I'm going to give you this card. All that I'm going to ask, and the same goes for anyone watching, if there's a card in my video that, in my videos, any of my videos that you really want, and it's not part of my personal collection, and I make it known in all my videos that it is or, or it isn't, um, let me know. All I'm going to ask is send me the amount for shipping charges. So to ship to the States in a regular plain white envelope in this method. Oh, there's another envelope. So if, I, if you want me to send, if you want me to send in one of these, the charge is about, uh, about $5. If you want me to use one of these bad boys, the, the bubble mailer with tracking, Canada Post charges $14.85 Canadian. These are Canadian prices I'm quoting right now. Um, about $15 Canadian, $14.85 or so, um, if you have a whole bunch of cards. So um, if you see anything you liked in my videos, uh, or if you have cards of your own and you're not exactly sure where to keep them and you don't want, just, you, you don't want them just laying around in a shoebox somewhere, penny sleeve, top loader, painter's tape and that's the best possible start to making sure your collection is in the best possible condition all right five laddies thanks everybody